My name is Paulo Wittner. I'm from Brazil, and I work for Joomla Bamboo as the main template developer. Actually, I'm the, not the only one. Anthony Olsen, which is the owner of the company, he's, he, he and me would work on the templates. So. And we have this concept in our company for the responsive design, and uh, we thought that it would be good to share. And, but before I start, in this room, who never did whatsoever any kind of work with responsive design? So we, okay. So all the others already did some work or are constantly doing work with responsive design, right? Yes. Okay, good. So responsive design. To start, there's a myth that responsive design is started on the CSS3, and that's not true. Responsive design is something that started on the CSS2, and, but nobody was really talking about because we didn't have browsers that support it, you know? Uh, so, did I have a reason really to start working, but still, they had the printing, you know, for, for type of media, so we have, so still have some people work using for, to target medias like printing and handheld devices. So, on the, when iPhone and Android start to have this HTML5 adoption on their mobile phones, so they, they saw, they realized that they could use now this technology and ever, I don't know, I, it was the end of 2010 when I, I heard for the first time for the media queries and ever since getting more and more and more popular, you know? And, but what happened is, okay, so what happened is in the, in the past, we had one type of media, you know? Basically, it was print media, which was brochures, magazines, newspaper. That's what was the type of communication we had, you know? So people was in a building, you know, getting styles on those type of media, printing. And uh, like I have one cousin that he works styling, I don't know how you call that in English, but it's styling magazines. I, I don't know how, how is the proper name there. Huh? Yeah, so he, he's doing styling magazines, I don't know. And um, he's doing that for, I don't know, almost 30 years now, you know? And uh, so now we are in a different way. So something's really happening, you know? And uh, the last, Reese. the resolution, the size, and that, that's making little difference for us, you know? And now we have all kind of sort of devices, you know, with different sizes with different specification and different use, you know? And uh, I was listening, I, w I was watching this show on TV and they were showing how we go they trying to, to, to prevent the future. And they are showing all kind of devices we will have in the houses. So why is important to us to be focused and usability and how we're gonna be targeting those devices. Like we have in the kitchen, they had this uh, stove with, with screen in the stove and had Android system and right in the kitchen, you know? So we had to target them. Today we have smart TVs and nobody's really thinking about smart TVs, and, uh, and I realized that because my kids, they had the video games, and video games, they have the browsers, and they are on the internet searching for their stuff in the, in the TV, you know? And so we're not really thinking about that we, like when you think about responsive design, we only think about mobiles and tablets, but we have a range of variety of stuff that's coming up. You know, that's, that's why the, the, it's important to us to understand better the responsive design. 
So we have those kind of more and the ones that are what I told, you know, the kitchen stuff and I don't know what kind of stuff are gonna be coming next years. And if you if they oh if I say like in five years everything will be very different, you say, Oh, five years not that long, but if you think two years before, and the, yeah, two years is enough to change a lot of stuff, you know. <clears throat> so then we think, you know, uh, we as developer, how, how we can target all those sizes, the, those varieties of devices. We screwed, not really, you know. So we, knew, we need to move from prescribed design to responsive design. Because before we had just one size, today we have a bunch of size resolutions and stuff. Uh, on, uh, talking about the mobile, and this is a 2010 statistic, you know, and uh, I couldn't find a, a newer one, but like the growth of mobile will be, will, will outspace the, the desktop mobile eight times. So if you think about that, from 2010 to today, uh, we had a huge difference, you know, and I heard, I heard the, uh, 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 So, yeah, and uh, one in five, that's still 2010 statistic, you know, one in five in 2010 was one people in five accessing internet from their mobile. Probably, probably they're going to be, next year they will be, everybody <laughs> will like five, one by one, I don't know, you know. So, and uh, in the next four years, that's still 2010, so next two years, <laughs> you know, the mobile internet usage will increase by a factor of 26. So that's huge. So it's a huge market. You know, that's why I had on the, on the, the first screen, everybody's going, uh, everybody's going mobile, why your website not? You know? <clears throat> Responsive design, like I said before, is not mobile design. Okay, so the question is, it's a design for, can somebody answer me? It's a design. It's a design. Okay, responsive design is not, doesn't really target anything. It's just a design, you know, and uh, that's, that's the beauty, you know. It's, it's a, a challenge that we're going to be facing, you know. That's, that's what I like most. So it needs to be flexible enough, you know, and need to be independent of the device, type of device, you know, and need to be for the web, okay? So we need, we need to rethink everything that we've been doing the last years. Like I'm in the business since 1998. That's, maybe that's somebody is even before me. You know, and until two years ago, uh, I was all working basically in the same thing. And uh, now I'm really, for a period of time, I was getting a little bored. You know, now I'm really excited. I'm fired up again because there's a lot of things really happening now. You know, <clears throat> the, I have to just put a comma here in my, in my, in my presentation. It's, we were stuck because for a long time we have this internet export. Microsoft was really taking over the world, you know? And, and so they were basically ruling and they didn't really want those stuff to happen. I don't know, you know, at the time, they, like today, maybe they have, they changed their mind. But like they are happy what, what was, was happening because they were really profiting on that. And then all of a sudden those have, they have this, the, this changes, the browsers are, new browsers coming in, and they have, especially Chrome now, they really push, and Apple with their devices pushing, changing the, 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 the way that we're going. And so in the last, really, in the last two years, three, two years, I'm really excited what, like, we are really seeing a revolution on the, on the internet, you know? So this is, this is one of the templates that, this is for Joomla. This is one of the templates that are, 
Uh, I work uh, in Joomla Bamboo, and this is total responsive uh, template. And um, so to build this very first template was we uh, like that need to have a lot of research, you know, because basically that Seth, where's Seth? That was the first really template available for, not really. Yours was the first one was released before July. Yeah, I, I know that yours are long time, but, huh? <laughs> but uh, you know, like, uh, so the, I think Seth, Seth's template was, you know, one web template was the, really the first one out there for Joomla to be distribute for the, the community, you know? But uh, like we had to do a lot of research on that because to develop a, a responsive template for a company is different than the develop a template that will be used for the whole community, you know? And uh, we had to take care and learn a lot of, lot of steps on the, on the process and we come up with this template. So at first, we, now we're gonna start to put hands on code, like let's get the hands dirty, you know. We already know the concept of, of the responsive design, you know? so we, now we need to understand how we're gonna do this in a proper way, okay? So let's start doing that. So we have this template, so we have the logo. The logo there is, is not, not, it's not image, it's font, you know. And um, so that, that, that logo is, they, ha is, is, they have a, a size, the font size, you know? And we have to understand, like for different size of device, that logo need to handle differently, you know, because it's a font. Because if I have a, a logo with 72 pixels, for this, mo the little mobile will take the whole screen, you know? And uh, <clears throat> so, we have to understand how to make the, the name. So, first of all, we need to, to understand another thing as well, uh, is forget about pixels when making a responsive design. We don't use the word pixels anymore, okay? What do we use? This is so good to hear because this was the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the bloody template designers came. <laughs> so, can somebody point me what, what we use today? Grid. You know? Grid. Yeah. We don't use pixels anymore. Okay? So every time you're going to, for now on, when you go build a template, forget about fixed grid. Or fixed pixels. Okay? We need to have flexible grids on, on, on our template. So that's, that's a concept that is coming on this, the HTML5 CSS3, you know? So everything is, is marked on the, on the screen, not by pixels anymore, by grid. So you, have, you can have the same, the same amount of grid in, in a mobile and a desktop, and the website will look the same, you know? Not really, no, no, please. You know, no, definitely not tables. Because if you, if you have tables, you're gonna, I, I don't think the, the mobiles will really render good, you know, because it's not really flexible. You cannot reposition stuff, so. So, then we have the grids, then we need to have flexible median, and we need to have flexible layout, you know? And so, the medias and, and, and flexible grid system is, is kind of easy to do. So without this, this thing, we cannot do really a flexible layout using the media queries. So we need to have some steps before, then really use the proper way the media queries. You know? So let's, let's start with flex, flexible grids. So we have an example here, this website, and it is using grids because you can see they have these columns here, browse our collection, so they have these columns, and if you take a look at the grid, they is divided by grid. So this, in this case, this website used a six, a six grid, a 960 with six grids, you know? Uh, 
UX Magazine is another one, and you can see like, you can see all these little squares with the news is all fixed by grids, you know? And we have New York Times as well, so it's by, divided by grids. So that, that, that makes, you know, that makes things a little easier to, especially for us that work with Joomla. And we work with modules, you know, and we are used to this, this already. And so we would just don't really know how to work, but if you, you got the grids, you can position stuff inside the grids and make everything aligned. It's easy to get aligned because one of the biggest problems of the websites is the alignment. You know, if you use the grid, you're not gonna have the problem with the alignments. And it will display nice on our screen. So that's, that's one, another beauty of the, the grids. So those, those grids that I just showed are not flexible grids at all. You know, they are fixed. So if you try to resize those websites, they're not gonna do the, the nice, nice work to adapt to your, your, web, your device. You know, so to get the flexible grids, we need to work first, start work with the, the fonts. We need to have flexible fonts, you know. So in this case of the, the template that I showed, we have the, the H2 with the, the, the logo, and we have the P with the tagline under the logo. So we normally, we start like this. We start the font size 100% no fixed size anymore. So usually, like that font over there, the responsive word in the top is 72 pixels. So in the normal way, you would just throw 72 pixels there. So you, we don't do that. So first of all, we do 100% and you're gonna ask, but I need to know at least the measure of the 100% so I can have some parameters, right? So 100% is 16 pixels, okay? So it's, in the desktop, 100% is 16 pixels. So from there, you can start working to, and to get flexible fonts. How are you gonna do that? So we have the, uh, the H2 with 72 pixels, right? So what we do, we divide by 16, which is the main size, divide by 16, then we have 4.5 EM, or 0.875 EM, which is the, 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 the paragraph, the 14 pixels. So if you put EM in your CSS, that will nicely adapt to all size of the device. That's really the correct way. You know, did somebody already know about that before? I think, I think Seth and some little others really know, you know. That, to be honest, that is something that I, I, I get to know not too long ago, you know. And uh, because what happened is I, I was looking how the other people were doing, and I said, what's the difference between percentage, EM, and pixels? And I had this nice surprise, and I, like, I'm, ever since I'm just using EM, not pixels anymore, you know? So let's move on. That, that's gonna be your, your markup in the CSS, you know? Ready? Okay, part two, flex your layout. So, we, the template will basically, the, 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 the layout will be CSS3, and because not all the, the browsers are compatible with the new CSS3 stuff, so we still have to use floats, clear out this, the floats, you know, to order to position the, all the, the stuff on your website. Uh, would be good if we could use first child, last child, child, child and nth child, two plus one, you know, would be very nice, but we just cannot use because of the browser compat compatibility. You know, sorry for my English. <laughs> I'm trying my best here. Uh, so we're gonna have our, our markup. Let's, let's get this 
website here as a, a demo for, for to make the flexible layout. You know, so it's, it's divided by grids. You know, and you can see. So we and we have this markup. We have we have the header and nav section and footer. This this is a basic HTML5 markup. You know, and for those who already know HTML5, you know, is familiar with that. For those who are already not familiar with HTML5, better start understanding that. That's the future. So that is real our markup here, right? That's our layout, and here is the, the markup. So we have the header, the, the nav, and then we have the section, and we have the footer. So within that basic markup, we have the elements. So we have the A2, the paragraph for the taglines, and then we have the, the, a figure. Figure is a new HTML5 tag for, for images. So that's more semantic. So when the Google bot comes to your website, he knows what we're really looking at. So, and here is the, the inside the sections is the information within the section. So within the figure, we have another parameters, another markups, with the fig captions and the images. So there we are. We have the fig captions and the images. So. The challenge here is to make everything, all those elements, be resizable, you know? And here we, are, we, are, we have the, the website, and here we have the, the grid. So in this case, they decide to use a 960 pixel wide template, you know, the layout, with only three columns, you know, or three grids. You can choose how much, how many grids you want to use in a website, you know? Uh, I, I'm the kind of person that likes to use as much grid as possible on a website because this way it gives me more flexibility, you know? There's people that like to work with only 12. There's people that like to work with 10. Uh, I like to work with 24. It's, everybody thinks it's crazy, but it's just because it gave, gives me more flexibility and I'm totally fine with that. It's something that I, I learned way in the past and it's something that I, I like to work, you know? And, uh, but in this case, the, we got a layout with only three grid, okay? So the three grid, like I said, is 960 pixels wide, you know? The grid is 300 pixels and then we have a gutter with 20 pixels, you know? But in order to make, res make it responsive, we cannot really put in my markup, like the, the width, it, instead to use my width it with fixed 960 pixels, that usually I would do that. Now I put max width, it, okay? So I'm gonna set max width. It. So in this in this case, won't allow the the container to go beyond what we need, so it won't break our design, but it's still, we're going to look nice in desktop or big screens. And uh, would be easy as well if we put in the, in the column 300 pixels and the gooder 10 pixels, you know, would be nice. But not, it's not like that we're going to be working as well because we need to make this flexible. So in order to get the that in percentage, what we want, we're gonna do some math. So we're gonna have, get the 300 pixels, which is the column size, you know, the grid size. We're gonna divide by the total container size, 960. And we're gonna get the result, the 0 0.3125. But because we want a percentage, like we learned in the school, we cut the two first numbers, and then we got the 31.25, you know, we have 0 0.3, now we move to case and we have 31.25%. So that's the way you calculate the size of your grid and, and percentage. So that, in this way, you're gonna be making it flexible, okay? 
Everybody understood this now? Any questions so far about that? No. Okay. Yes? That, that's for the gutter, the gutter, and uh, but, and you need to have that that very long number. You need to have that because, uh, especially for Internet Explorer, you know. And if you don't put that, Internet Explorer will position wrong, you know. That's the cross browser way and need to be done. <laughs> No, there's no limit. So there's no growth. I mean, we could, couldn't we just chop off the last piece and do one, two, seven, and then uh, I think, I, yeah, I think it won't make really difference. It's just, it's just a matter of example here. But I uh, like, it's six, 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 seven. I think, I think the seven is just to, to stop doing the six, 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 six forever, you know? And uh, here, here, like there was the way there was, and here the way that it is now. So that's that's really the the the, the way you're gonna do the flexible way to, to work with the grids. And then we have now we have to work with flexible medias. So pictures have their size fixed, okay? Images and videos, they have audios, they have all fix the size, so we, have to, we need to make them flexible as well. So the, the easiest way to work with that is add max with it 100%. So that will be 100% to the container they are within. So usually what you're going to do is every time you have a, a media, a picture or whatever, you need to place them inside a container that has a proper uh, column size or the grid size that you want to work, okay? So sometimes you can, if, I don't know, I, I think that is difficult, uh, but uh, if sometimes you can do straight on the image, you know, if you have access to CSS, you can work straight in the image, you know? But uh, I, I, I like the way, to, I know everybody thinks, oh, and another container, but to be really, uh, semantic, the, the code, is better to put inside the figure container, the figure, figure markup, the figure tag. So this way, like I said before, uh, the, the robots, they're going to read your content and we'll know what images and what is for and if you have a caption, it's even better, you know. And so that's why we put always image max 100%. But we have an issue. Uh, video as well, but we have an issue with Internet Explorer. To be honest, Internet Explorer, but it's still, I have to share with you guys because uh, I don't know, like, if somebody here is targeting the Chinese market, they need to do a de uh, design for, for Internet Explorer 6 because Chinese is, is, the last time that I saw, they still 30%, you know, of users using Internet Explorer 6, you know, and, uh, but anyway, you do a separate override for the Internet Explorer 6 and put with it fixed 100%. No, because Internet Explorer 6 doesn't read, doesn't understand Max with it. So another issue for, for the, is the Windows image resizing. And you can see, like, that is the, the, the image. And below is the image resized by Windows, especially with the old browsers. You know, Firefox 2 and Internet Explorer 7 and 6. So you see the image is getting a little cracked, you know, and the, especially when you have fonts. So in order to, to have that fixed, we've, we have to add a, a proprietary CSS filter, you know, the alpha image loader. You know, that to be triggered needs to be through uh, JavaScript. Okay, and that, this is the, the JavaScript where you can, the, the address where you can find. But uh, to be honest, I think you're not gonna need because media queries is intent for new devices. New devices are already HTML5 capable. 
you're not going to find any device with small screen that use Internet Explorer 7 or Firefox 2. You know, sorry for the word, but it's a really BS, you know, to develop a, a media query website compatible with Internet Explorer old versions. Please. You know, unless, unless you have someone that comes to you and say, I want compatible with Internet Explorer, then you do. Otherwise, just forget about it. Okay. Uh, another problem is bandwidth, you know, especially with the big images, because actually what you're gonna be downloading is the bigger image, but what you're gonna be displaying is the smaller image, you know. So for a desktop is fine, you know, because in, uh, uh, at your house you have this 100 megabyte internet connection, you know. And you develop in that, and you know oh, what a nice design, you know, they had this huge picture there. It's the top resolution and stuff, well, wow, that's nice, you know. But if you have someone with a mobile when a 3G, especially like in Brazil, we have a poor 3G, you know, very, very slow. We cannot afford to really download 300 KB picture, you know. And so for that, we have, a, there's a lot of solutions in, in the internet. You know, there's a solution that works in the server side, and there's a solution that works in the browser like JavaScript. One of JavaScript, uh, that's the correct way to download the, the low resolution. That is one of the, the scripts. We have a little trick to install, but uh, need to install by the uh, H access. But uh, it's, still, it's a nice way because it will identify the size of the, uh, uh, who is calling the image, you know, if it's a mobile device or not, and we will render the image and resize the image and only deliver to the device a very low resolution image, you know, and that's, that's it's a good script to work. There's another script that I, I just, I, I, like, I never tried that one. It's a nice one. It's, it was made by a Brazilian guy. And it, it does a, a, a very nice job. I don't have the address here. I should put the, the address here. But it's, it's uh, what it does when it sees the image and identifies this new this device that is coming, is calling. And if the image has a face, it crops only the face, you know? Uh, it will crop, it will analyze the images and see what part of the image is really important. Try to identify what really important. We'll crop just the part that is important, you know, and we'll deliver to the device just special when have faces. And uh, that's a nice way to, to work. And I never worked, I, I just got to know that, you know. And here is the markup that should be. That's the way that we do. But using that special script, we're gonna have the data dash full, uh, dash full SCR high resolution PNG. So this way, we're using this, this markup, you're gonna be telling the JavaScript what image you need to target to reduce the images, the image size. Okay? Can I, okay. Now we're gonna get to the media queries, finally because we already set our layout to understand the rules when the media queries comes up. So here we have the, the website that can be viewed by all the, the, the screen sizes. And now we're gonna add the media types. You know, so we, we have the media types, so we have the screen, we have the print, and we have the handle held. held hand Handheld. The handheld, somebody may asking, is the old devices, you know, the old ones. So that's why I'm saying that the media queries is not something that is in CSS3. It's since CSS2, you know, and nobody was really using. People used to use the handheld, handheld a media screen. Remember when you used to go to those websites and to, to really access, be accessible on a mobile, you had to put m.whateverdomain.com or mobile.whateverdomain.com. 
So some of them was using this, you know, but it wasn't really a media, a media query website at that time. It was a special template just made for the mobile. It was a big hassle, you know. I, I had opportunity to do that in the past, you know. And so today, uh, going to screen, you know, the media queries, you, you have to target what media type you're going to be targeting. Plus, so in our case, we're developing a website, so we need to put a screen, which is actually the screen of the website, you know? And you will tell, like, if the width of the, the viewport, not the device, the viewport, if the width of the viewport is 320 pixels, apply this CSS, okay? That can be done either in the header of the website or within the, the CSS, you know? So we, you, the top one, you put in the header of the website, in the HTML, HTML markup. The second one is a way that you can, if you have your, your CSS sheet open already, so you can, just add the at media screen and max with it through 320 pixels. So everything that is inside there will be targeted only for 320 pixels. You know? Uh, that's another, another way. You know, the minimum with it. So if a, a, a website is, is if a, a device has a screen less than 800 pic, uh, 800 Pixels won't see whatever is inside this property, you know? So that's the media features. You need width, height, device width, device height, orientation, aspect ratio, device aspect ratio, color, color index, monochrome, resolution, scan, and grid. So that's the media types, okay? And so that's the if you want to, to target, like for example here, where we can adapt our design to a specific range of device, like if, if we want a device max with this 768, so we are targeting the specific device now, not only the view, viewport anymore. Okay, that's one of the nice things as well. So if you want to really target a device, a specific device, you can use that, you know, those media types. So, the, the, another example, you know. So, browse compatibility, yes? So, if you turn your iPad, you need to set those max devices with it for each of the, the positions, you know. I have, I, I can show you guys. Sure, sure, what? So my real question is, will the CSS dynamically reload like from an iPad? Most of the time. Not really reload. It just applies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what happened. iPad 3? I wanted to show, but uh, I won't find now. I, I should put there. Um, I, have, I have a scheme with all the most used device and their resolution size. And uh, so I every time I'm gonna work with media queries, I base on that, it's a, it's a scheme, you know? So it's easy to me to, to do that. But uh, like, like, Victor, uh, I don't really use this one, the max device with it. You know, it's just in special case. I really use the max screen, you know, the, the, so the viewports, so it's easier to target general devices, you know. So every time you, you change position of the, the, the iPad or stuff, you know, it just finds what, the, the, what we're gonna be, the max with it they're gonna be going, so. Browser compatibility. Like I said, browser compatibility, 
Internet Explorer 9 is fine. You know, Opera 9 and Opera Mobile, Safari 3 and Plus, Firefox 3.5 and Plus, and Chrome. Uh, to be honest, like I said before, don't even bother with those. You know, that's not really an issue. You know, because I cannot see why you want to make a responsive design for Internet Explorer old version. I cannot really see. One thing that can come to my mind probably is those very small netbooks, but they still are 1,024 pixels. You know, so I cannot really see why you would do for to target Internet Explorer 6. But still, for for to overcome this problem, you know, we have this JavaScript, you know, that will make the Internet Explorer and old versions browsers handle the media queries, you know. So if you really want to do that, you can use, the, but this is another JavaScript loading, another library loading in your website, okay? Mobile resizing, uh, another thing is, uh, sometimes a lot, I had, I, I think it was in my first website, I developed, and when I went to test on my iPhone, I could see the website, the normal website. I didn't really see the, 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 mobile, the mobile version I built, you know? And like, this is the, the website, as you can see, the normal, but that's the, sh the way that should look, you know? So you have to put this meta, viewport contained with it, device with it, initial scale 1.0, okay? So if you don't add this, you're, you're more likely to get a full website in your mobile, you know, with the small, small uh, fonts and images and stuff. So that's, that's another, another tip. You know, uh, I, I added this image because I liked the, the, the way that they did. Uh, we have two ways to start building the website, you know. One is by graceful degradation. What, hap what is what the difference between graceful degradation and progress enhancement? Is the graceful degradation is you built big with mostly 960 pixels and you go resizing to adapt to, the, to a mobile, you know? Or you have the progress en enhancement where you, you start with the mobile size and then start to adapt to a bigger size. You know, I like to work with a graceful degradation, but there's a, there are people that like to work with the progress enhancement. So either way is fine, you know, and uh, that's just, so we have there the tools to create very nice and I'm gonna be showing some examples, okay? This is the very first website I built. That this was in the end of 2010, and this website, like I was when I when I I read about the, the this the media query, and I, I I had just got this project in the company, and uh, and I said, oh, I I want to do that. I want to so. The, the lady that ordered that, this website, she didn't really bother to, to be a responsible designer. She just didn't even knew that that thing was, was existed. And so I decided to add for free for her, you know? And she is happy as, so that's, okay, so that's, that's the way that it's handling, you know? Where is my mouse, okay. So if you go shrinking the screen, you see. So that's the adaptation of the media screen, media query. So that was the very first one, and that was based in a in a website that I I, I found that was just released at the time it was less less framework. Is is less framework set? That was 10, 10 grid, huh? Less framework, less, less framework four or something like that. 
three, whatever. So that's what the first time that I got in contact with, with the media careers and ever since I'm, I'm very, very excited about. Uh, now talking about those websites are all Joomla, you know. This, this one is a brand of clothes in Brazil, very famous brand. And we developed, they asked for a mobile version. So when you go resizing, you have the, and this website is live for more than one year and a half. And ever since, ever since I, 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 I built this website, new technolo technologies came. And uh, one of the, the things is about the, the menu. You see the menu is one on top of another here. Uh, now they have this new menu that they is, is placed here in the top. You know, that's, that's a way to, to do, you know, position the menu, the navigation one under another when you have just a little ones like this, only four is fine, but when you have, you have big nav navigation, that won't really work fine with the small screen devices, you know? So I, I will show you the difference. Uh, this is the new website, the, the latest template we released in Joomla Bamboo. It's totally responsive design. So that, this is the menu that I'm saying. If, uh, if, you, if you compare here, you have the menu here in the side. And when you reduce the, the menu, the, the size of the screen, you have the menu in the top here, so it's easy to, it's easier for the, for the people to tap and open the menu and, and and get their where they want to go on the website. But still, you can see. So it's the smaller screen and adjusting. No, the those max with it 100%. No, we didn't put the, the script, script that I showed you to resize the images because that script need to do some work on the .hss, how do you call it? A, 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 a access in your, in, your, in your server. So not everybody knows how to work with that, you know? So we, we did not use on the framework because like Juna Bamboo need to build websites for all kind of industry, you know, with general templates. And uh, that's why we couldn't use. But when you have a specific project, then you know how to work with ATX access, then you find to use. Uh, this is another template. You know, this has a different menu. I, I'm just showing this to, to show the options for the menu. We put this menu inside a drop-down box, you know, so it's, you can see it's a pretty large menu, you know, navigation. So it's another easy way so the people has accessibility on your website, you know. So you, you need to always understand that you your website as a responsive need to be accessible as possible, you know. So doing navigation like this is easier. Can you imagine if, if I do a navigation this big, like this one here, one under another, we're gonna have a huge list and the website, people never gonna really see the, the website. Um, this one here is, is made by Locke. I don't know who, who knows Locke. He, he did a, a adaptation for the bootstrap, but it's not, see, this is the, the, the Twitter bootstrap. Uh, it's another option that is available in, in for Joomla. I'm just showing things that are related to Joomla, okay? So this is the type of stuff that is available for Joomla. Is, is you can download this for free as well. But uh, if you want, need support, then you need to pay. But uh, it's, it's worth, you know, for somebody that's starting. And uh, it's not very, very expensive. It's, it's, very, it's a minimum fee. And so this is another option, totally based on Bootstrap, Twitter Bootstrap, you see. Oh yeah. And another one here is Seth Solution. You know, it's a one web. 
they have different way. He has a different way to handle the menus. If you click here, it throws it to the to the bottom, and uh, I like the idea. Yeah, so JavaScript free, and uh, that's that's nice because if if someone turns off your JavaScript, so is is a very accessible. And another one is a Joomlart pure site. Uh, the, those, those template clubs, um, I didn't find many that works. Actually, I just Joomla Bamboo and Joomlart really that I found out. If somebody, someone knows another, please let me know. But, huh? Gavik? I didn't try theirs. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, the Joomla, the, the JMB Beyond website is, I don't know who tried in, in mobiles. It's, it's one of our templates, you know, Joomla Bamboo templates. And Except for the table. Except for the table. <laughs> Except for the table, sure. So there, there it is, you know, their version for the mobile size. So Joomla, so I'm sharing here some options that are available in Joomla Sphere. And so that's, that's what it is. Another thing that uh, I want to get in, get in now is about does, like, do my website really need to be responsible? You know, responsible, responsive, oh, responsible. Responsive, you know, you need to ask your, this question for you. Yeah, you need to ask that. Not everybody, not every website need to be responsive, okay? You really need to think if, like sometimes a customer comes to you and he has just a, a, a little tool shop, you know, and he wants to be accessible on mobile and you need to ask your customer why he wants his website to be responsive, you know? No, like uh, I, that website I built for an agency, actually, and uh, I never got in touch again with them. So they did, they, they did some change on the website and did a little mess, <laughs> you know? And I wasn't really happy about it, so I cannot fix and I don't have access to FTP anymore. But, uh, but I did that just for my experience, you know, just, and the lady was happy, you know? And, uh, but I never get any, anything any information to see what the traffic is. Um, if you create, you know, you, you start out with like a, a responsive template and you set up the grids and you get our mobile hook up, do you find that once we have our desktop version and we have a responsive uh, design in, implemented, that a lot less work is going to be actually making your content work in the mobile space? You mean third-party extension? No, uh, like, I'm building a website, I get all my content built out. Is it just going to plug and play into the responsive design? Oh, if you do, if, like, the way that I, remember that I showed you, you need to work your content to be flexible as well. You know, images and uh, the, the size of the fonts and stuff. If you do that before, then you should be fine. You, do, you, you need to do little or none work on the content, you know? Unless you have a very specific content, you know, and with different styles everywhere, probably gonna have some trouble there. But if it's a, ba like, doesn't really need to be very basic, but if it's just pictures placed and uh, with floats and stuff, and will fit very nicely, you know? And it's, works, it works very great. great. Uh -huh. But if we are relying on media queries on max width and pixels, so you said earlier the demo pixels, I was really excited, and then a number of almost all the examples have a max pixel width. If it's truly responsive, should we not even have a pixel indication anywhere in our CSS? I mean, shouldn't it just be a hundred percent? That's that's the way it should be. 
Like the the only way the only time you're gonna be using the the fixed pic the, the fixed pixel actually is is not really fixed pixel it's the max width of the main container. The rest is gonna be percentage or for fonts em. Oh, the, 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 ideal, the, the ideal situation would be to you have uh, none fix, fixed pixels at all. You know, the ideal, that's the ideal target. And, uh, and it, so this way it will save you time building those media query size stuff to adapt on the website, so in the sizes. So, the only thing that you're going to be doing is basically is setting the size of the main main container when the, the desktop is 960 and uh, is in the in, in the iPad landscape like iPad you know so you have you have iPad like there you know so you you don't need to you you need to leave a little space you know, in the edges here, so it's seven six eight. So you you probably gonna be seven fifty, whatever. You know, there's people that like to put whatever size. So we're gonna put max width, it, you know, seven hundred fifty, and uh, and then we're gonna have the 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 size of the, the the screen adapt to your your reality. So that's really the kind of work you're gonna be doing in the media queries, in the CSS media queries. And another thing is to, when you have, when you have those grids, you know, when you have the grids, uh, when you have small devices, very small devices, like iPhone or stuff like that, those grids that were, in the example that I showed here, uh, where's my mouse? Back here, yeah. The example that I showed here. Okay. Where the figure, because there was a grid here, see, when you got a small device, those grid become 100%, not 31% again. Remember that 31.525%? So that's the, the only thing that you really need to do in the media queries, you know, inside the media queries, is to set the size of the main container plus the size of the, the, the someone called it, and the size of the grid. That's basically, if you did a, a, a responsive layout, everything will fit inside. That's, of course, when some of the stuff you, you still need to work like, uh, I do a little adaptation, but if you do the way that I'm talking about, you're gonna ha have less and less work doing the, the adaptive on the, the CSS, in the media queries. Does someone has more, I think, how, how long, yeah? Yeah, about to. Okay, so, just get to the end here. I hope it was useful and understandable. So, oh, done. Thank you very much.